Hey guys, how you doing today? It's me, Kelly. So today we're going to do a basic art journal page um, using white school glue and just some basic things we have around the house. Now, first I'm going to show you, we're going to use our white school glue instead of Mod Podge, Decoupage, uh, Collage Podge, whatever. We're going to use white school glue. We're also going to go basic because I'm a basic girl today. Um, maybe you guys remember this that I made. I think last week or the week before, you see all that delicious shiny oh metal. Oh, it's delicious. And all it is, it is a uh, advertisement from a magazine. And if you're interested in what I did, how I did it, why I did it, all that kind of thing, I'm going to link it up here in the corner or down below in the uh, description. You just click down below underneath my name and you'll find some links. You'll find links to my uh, other social medias that you can follow me on. You will find links to my Patreon if you uh, would like to help me out. Go check out my Patreon. I'm redoing it. And also there's this great place called Blitzy. It's blitzy.com. The link will be down below as well. And uh, it's a referral link, but if you're not into helping other, you know, doing referrals for people, you can definitely go check it out yourself. They have a million and six different art supplies from paint to stencils, to yarn, to sewing, to uh, pens and paper, and every possible thing you could ever want in life. And you get it up to 70% off. I've been using this company for about three, four years, and I love them. And they always have like the up-to-date kind of stuff um, that's out there. And um, I'm going to be getting the Dilutions pens to try. I'm very anxious to see what those are like. And yeah, so if you're interested, please click the link down below, check them out. And if you sign up and get a couple, uh, you know, a couple bucks thrown my way, I really, really appreciate it. And just to say, if, uh, you know, people on YouTube do do sponsored, you know, sponsored posts or what have you, you know, it's just a great way to, um, you know, support your favorite YouTuber. So yeah. And if you don't go check it out anyway, it'll save you money. I'll have to keep on keeping on. Okay. So these are just, that was my little spiel. Cause I always get crap for those kind of things. Um, this is just paper from a book and you can see, I just took some colors, uh, the same colors on both and smashed them around, wrinkled them and deliciousness. This is the dryer sheet and that's going to add some texture. Um, because a lot of you do not have molding paste, modeling paste, whatever you call it. Um, and you want texture. So I'm going to do a couple. I have a couple things we're going to use do for texture. Um, and this is one of my favorites. So we'll be doing that. And again, this um, I already did uh, a video on and I love it. But obviously, like I said, think out of the box um, to use things. I even have... <laughs> I even have um, how you call sanitary napkins, pads, whatever you call them, the outer papers. Um, some of them are cloth and they're very nice to use in your art journal. Clean, of course, but you know what I'm saying. So the covers. Okay, let's go. So I am not going to gesso. Again, if you want to gesso, please do. Don't let me stop you. But what I am going to do is smear some glue down because we are going to make a background. Hmm, I don't want to use that one. Which brush do I want to use? I want a fairly big one. Excuse my arm. That's enjoyable, isn't it? Okay, I'm just going to use a bigger brush. And I'm going to use my school glue. Now, I like to... This is how I like to do it. Do you have to do it like this? Nope. You do it whatever way you want. I'm going to squeeze some out. Okay. I'm going to wet my brush. Well, that water's dirty. I'm going to wet my brush. And I'm going to... I just want to loosen it up a little bit. And it's whatever you want. If you want it looser or, um, I just want it a little looser. And if you have a spray bottle, just spray a couple sprays like that. And look at that. It just lets it, you know, and, and do both sides of your brush. See how I'm doing both sides? Because, um, one side will be, you know, having all the product and not, uh, all right. I can even go a little more. just want it a little looser and I always do both sides of the brush even when it's paint no matter what it is whatever you're mixing or working with okay all right so now I'm going to do both 
side. So I'm going to start with this one and I'm just putting some glue down and I'm going to tear it. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to put it just like that. And I don't think I need that in there. Normally, what I will tell you to do is to put paper between here. I don't have my paper sitting here. Uh, let's see. Just so you don't, you know, get on the, the other page behind you and it doesn't stick, you can use um, wax paper. You can use whatever you want. Now, this is a bit um, of a thinner paper, as you can see. It's going to kind of... Uh, get a little wilty. I don't worry about that. I think if you um, want to do an art journal page, do it. Don't worry about that. It'll dry. It'll be fine. So let me put a piece over here. And you can see I'm not worrying too much about how or the colors because we are doing a mixed media art journal page because that's how I like to do it and when you're working with mixed media I, or when I'm working with mixed media I should say I like to do layers and that's what we're gonna do so now I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna tear it and you can see the fuzzies and all oh such good stuff and I'm just gonna lay it kind of where I want it oh it smells like a gain <laughs> And I'm going to push it down a little. I'm obviously going to need more glue. But I want it to have texture. So you see. And you can even wet your brush a little bit. My water's a little dirty. But it helps the, it helps the paper mold a little bit better. It'll dry completely fine. But it just helps everything mold. To the paper. And you can squirt it too. You can squirt, you can do whatever you want. Okay, look at that. Oh yeah, and then we're gonna do that one, which obviously I need some more glue. Come on. Oh yeah, that's some glue. So I'm just gonna pull it from the side and put it down here. And when you're using these dryer sheets, I mean, you can, do this on your nonstick mat with the dryer sheet and kind of mold it the way you want to mold it. Um, there's all kinds of different ways. Think outside the box. I love giving you guys ideas and that's what I do here. I do, you know, I do these things for you guys to get ideas and to uh, think outside the box and get you excited. And I love when you guys write me or tag me and show me what you guys do just makes me so happy because you know that's why I do what I do I want you to look at this and say you know what I never thought I could art journal but guess what I can I can do a mixed media art journal and I can do it you know with things around the house I don't have to go out and buy all kinds of scrapbook paper and you know like I said if you go to your local library they always have magazines and books you know that are broke you know or ripped or whatever and all you want is the pages. The dollar store has tons of them, you know, so never, don't give up. Don't think you can't do it because you can. Let's try one of my good pages that I made. Look at that. Oh, gorgeous. And I'm just going to rip. I'm going to do them smaller pieces because when I lay it down, lay it down, it's going to have some texture. And some itsy bits of pieces in there. And do it on top too. To make sure it goes down, you know, that it sticks. If it overlaps, no big deal. Look at that. Oh, so nice. So nice. So nice. So nice. And I'm going to put a little bit on there. And, you know, something else is we're building up the paper might be thin so you might be using a piece of printer paper which is absolutely fine to use to paint on or whatever um and 
the more layers of paper and paint will make it thicker and make it more, how do you say, uh, like durable, tough. You know what I mean? Now, listen, please don't write me and tell me that the white school glue is not, um, what do you guys always yell at me about, uh, archival. I have been using white school glue for years and years. I have all my pages. I have all my, um, you know, uh, moleskin and, and everything that I've used, art journals, art journals that I've made and everything else where I've used white school glue. It's not yellowed. This is for you to start out. If you want to start art journaling and you don't, um, you know, you don't have all the supplies and maybe you want to test it out to see if you would even like it, right? That's what this is for. This isn't, you know, use Mod Podge. That is fantastic. It's a great thing. If, you, if you're if you worried about it being archival, of course you can use Mod Podge. This is for all of you that write me and are starting out or want to do, you know, art journaling and you don't know where to start and you don't have a lot of money. And we all have white school glue kicking around the house or you can go to Walmart. It's so plentiful right now because of the slime stuff. So, you know. Now I'm going to show you a twofer. See how I have that? Now what we're going to do is I'm going to put a little glue up here. But you know what I mean? Like, don't, don't be, this is just to help people out. Now, if we rip this, let's do it and put the print down. So you're getting a twofer. See what I'm saying? Look at that. Oh, no, you didn't. Oh, yes, I did. I did, I did, I did. I'm going to put a little bit right here. And white school glue is so inexpensive and it's so, uh, you know, great to have. And you, you can see how I added some uh, water to thin it out. So you don't have to worry if it's too thick for you. You don't have to, but I, that's how I like to do it. But look, you do you, boo. You do you. All right, I'm only going to put a little bit more here. Put a little purple here. Now, obviously, when I start building on top of this um, metal, metallic paint, um, it's going to cover that up. And it's going to take that metallic shine away. Now, we can keep some of it peeping through if we want. But, you know, that's up to you. I'm not worried about it too much. I just want to... Come on. Come on. Stick it down. Stick it down. I'm not afraid to push with my fingers because I like to push it, push it real good. Uh, 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 uh. Okay. What else do I want? Hmm. Just go back and fudge, you know, fudge around with the uh, papers if you... See them popping up a little bit. It's not a big deal. I'm going to put a little, a little more of the texture. Just the littlest bit right here over that. And where else? Maybe down here. All right. I'm going to lay this here. Perfect. And I think here. Oh, I got two that are ripped. Well, that's enjoyable. And you can see I can scrunch it up more while it's wet. I can really pull at it and scrunch it up, give it a little, uh, you know, stuff a little texture. I can lay it on top of some of the papers already glued down. It doesn't matter. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm okay. All right, so I'm going to rinse that. I'm going to take my paper towel. I'm going to wipe this up because you don't want to get like me and have it everywhere because I do have a tendency to be messy Marvin. All right. That's all I'm going to do with that. I'm going to pull this up. I'm going to take my heat gun. Now, if you don't have a heat gun, use a hair dryer. If you don't have a hair dryer, honestly, this stuff dries so fast, but I don't want to keep you forever in my video so I'm just gonna dry it real fast don't put it too close if you're using a heat gun don't worry if something pops up because we can either glue it back down and let me tell you something I tell you this about you this all the time the Elmer's uh, glue sticks which let me show you Elmer's glue sticks. these are archival so you can use these if you don't 
want to use uh, white school glue. It's up to you. Or if little pieces come up and it annoys you, use the glue stick when you're done. Dries completely on contact and it's delicious. Not to eat, but to paint with. <laughs> uh, and I'm just using my finger if I see anything. There's not much. Oh, I love, I love all that. Now, if you hold this close to like a thicker part of the glue that's not dry, you'll get some bubbles. I don't know. If you, I don't think you can see that. Let's see if you can see it this way. That uh, must be dry already. You want it damp, and it will it will make some bubbles for you, some extra texture. Also, look, I burnt a hole. If you hold this, watch. These are just little tips. Hold it for a second, and if you're using a hair dryer, you do the same thing. Hold it close, and what's going to happen is it's going to melt it a little bit and give you some really cool texture. Draw for me. Come up this way a little bit. And don't be afraid to move your book around, right? Turn it around so you have different angles to write. Okay. I think we're fairly good. Okay, okay. Uh, might be a little, a little like these, uh, the dryer sheets, you know, they're going to be a little damper than the rest because it's kind of like a fabric, but we'll be okay. Now, if you have paper behind you, lift it and lift it so it doesn't stick to your paper that you're, you know, doing here. You also, a great tip for when you're doing any art journal, you can see the back's a little wet still, dry it. That'll help it dry as well. Sometimes just from the front, it doesn't get that bottom layer. So this is going to help. And you can see what's wet. See, like that's still wet. And what I'll do is just hit it. And dry it. I think that's going to be good. Okay, so now let's pick a background color that you want to use. Now, if you have a limited supply of colors, limited color supply, I don't know how to say that. Always go light to dark. So I just picked some green. I picked color of that, I don't know, lemon yellow. I picked a dark green and I picked a, I think it's called a pure orange. That's what I picked for here. So I'm going to take my brush and I'm okay if it's a little damp. I don't want it to be completely dry because I don't, you know, I don't need it to go everywhere. I'm going to take some of my pure yellow and I'm just going to give it a squirt. Now you can put it in your palette, um, whatever you want to do. Kind of put it like that. And some of the pieces that don't have much in them, on them. Now look, can you see that delicious texture there from the dryer sheet? Oh yeah. And I'm not making it opaque. I'm making, you know, I'm just kind of going over a little bit. Not the biggest deal. Like I said, I have so many videos using these dryer sheets in so many different ways. They're just so, I mean, we're reusing, we're recycling, we're doing all that good stuff. So it's not going, you know, going to waste. And if you lightly take your brush and just drag it over, you'll get a lot of that texture, which I will do with a darker shade. Kind of go in there. All right. Perfect. 
perfect. And I'm going to dry it real quick. These folk art acrylic paints dry so fast. You can use watercolor as well. Just know that they're going to mix because they get reactivated every time you put something white uh, wet on them. Right. Oh, I'm going to show you that in a second. And you want to dry in between because the next color I put on is going to make it mud if the color is not dry underneath or mostly dry. You don't have to have it completely dry, but you want it, you want it fairly good. Now look at this deliciousness. Now I will do a video on this. I do have other videos. I will link it down below if I remember. Look at the crackle. I love doing crackle with white school glue. I have a million on my channel. But look at that. Look at the crackle. Isn't that delicious? And it's so easy to do. Look at that. Oh, I love it. Okay. You see? Got that going on. I'm just going to pull my page up so it doesn't stick. Now, let's go for... Let's do a little orange just just because now you can see i'm leaving some of the blue showing through i'm not worrying about that too much i'm going to hit this a little squeeze all right come on just a little squeeze on just these papers that are showing i'm going to rinse my brush now tap you know just Give a push of the uh, water off, but I still want some water. And then I'm going to very dry brush over. Like right there. It's still paper. Look at that. Okay. Now, if you wet your brush a little more, it'll be more of a glaze, which is perfectly fine. But what I'm going to do. Just kind of all over, no rhyme or reason. I am going to take a paper towel or a rag, whatever you're using, and I'm going to dab it for Angie. Angie's in the house. Just to lift up, and you can, you see I have this on here. I can go here, and I'm starting to make my own mixed media paper. You know, because you're not going to waste it. You're just going to keep using it each color and you can use that your paintbrush and do the same thing i just haven't okay because i want some of that to come through but not a lot and then like down here there's a little yellow that you know maybe i want some orange there and i like that that's just a little bit not worrying about it and i am going to dry it but do you see how bright that orange comes out because it didn't mix with that yellow because the yellow was dry and that's what the goal is and just a real quick hit of the hair dryer heat gun or like i always say if you don't have them no big deal put on a favorite one of your favorite youtubers favorite artists watch a video of theirs it'll be dry when it's done put on your favorite song i always like to do two songs sometimes if it's very uh humid here you know and hot it gets a little frustrating so um using the heat gun can be like because it's been like 100 percent humidity here and very hot so I'll just leave it dry sometimes. Okay, so now what I want to do is I'm going to take a light green, shake it, and I'm going to squirt it here, just the littlest bit. I'm going to take my brush again, again, wet, not really wet. And I'm going to do this because I want it to thin out just the littlest bit. And I'm going over these. Now take it when you go, I'm always up and down, but if you take it sideways, it's going to hit different um, parts, right? Maybe there's uh, some texture going this way that going up and down won't hit, won't do. All right. I want some of that white to show through. I don't necessarily want it to be all covered. All right, 
Okay. I think we're good with that. I think huh. <laughs> maybe a little bit of the grass green. Just the tiniest bit. I'm just going to put it here on this light green. And some mucus came out with it. That's all. It's a lamb ball. Happens sometimes. And just go over this one more time. Just to hit some of them high spots. And to go in very loosely. I like holding my paintbrush up at the top. Try it. Just try it when you're doing this stuff. Just gives you less control. And I just think sometimes that's what we need is to not always be so, you know, in control. You want it to be, you know, very like, ooh, okay. I see you. I know what you're doing. You're just having fun. Okay, yeah. Good, good, good. Yeah, I like it. I like it. All right. See that? Now one more time. And I don't need to dry it so thorough because I'm going to be stamping next. And I'm going to do two different techniques on here. One that drives everybody crazy. Now, you guys who've been with me for a while, you know what I'm going to do next, right? I'm going to leave one page and work on it like this. And then another page, I'm going to do the nasty two. All right. Okay. So now I'm going to take some white paint. Now, you can do black. You can do whatever you want. But because I'm doing on the video, I think I'm going to do white. Um but I, I love doing black. I love making it really grungy, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to take your normal wicker white and I'm going to give it a little whoop, right? No big deal. You can use your brush. You can use a makeup sponge. You can use a spouncer. You can use your hands. You can use your fingers. You can use a paper towel. You can use a roly poly. You can use whatever you want. And I'm just going to drag it down. And look how that changes that whole page compared. So we're going to do comparison. Look at that. Now the harder and the more you blend it, of course, the more it's going to, you know, get lighter and lighter. But I like, if you can see right here, let me lift it up for you. I love how that looks through all those cracks and crevices. Look at the texture on there. And you know, I didn't put any texture paste, modeling paste, or anything. That is all us just doing this stuff. Great. And that's why I love crinkling the papers and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so now we have that. So I'm going to work on this side while that dries for a second. And first I think... Hmm, I think I'm going to grab a stencil. Do I want to do a stencil or let's do a stencil? Yeah. This is a stencil from Folk Art 31477. Does it have a name? Doesn't have a name. I don't think they name them. But use whatever you have, whatever stencil you have. Yeah, no, it just has the number 201601. So, whatever that means, we're going to stencil real quick. All right. It's like a window kind of thing, but not really. And I'm going to do both sides. So, I'm not, you know, I'm going to kind of do like this. Now, I'm going to use Dilution Spray because I like it. And I think I'm going to go with blue. And this color is Vibrant Turquoise. I'm going to shake it up. And I'm going to spray. Now, you can see it's not completely flat and all that. And I'm not going to worry about it. But I am going to hold it up. And just give it a second. Look at that. And then I'm going to do the same over here, very lightly. 
And I'm going to give you a tip about these. I'm going to have a video where I give you a tip on these sprays. And I'm going to dry it. These dry quick too. You can get these on Blitzy as well at a discount. Great colors. I love the reds and the pinks and the, I always get, you know, I get Roy G. Biv and the magenta. I'm not going to lie. I get a magenta. All right. Look at that. Oh yeah. And you can see the difference on the white. Oh, and it picks up those textures. Oh, yeah. Now, if you don't have stencils, don't worry. Okay, now you see I have this extra. What I'm going to do is lay it here. I'll take my paper towel. Use your hand, whatever. Don't waste it because we're making mixed media paper underneath. Look. Now, what you could have done, which I didn't, and I'm okay with that, you could put it down up here and get the complete opposite. You know, and it just takes some of that off. Not a big deal, but you see, and it just comes off real nice. Not a big deal. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. All right. Okay. Let's do the magenta color. It is called bubblegum pink, right? Now this is fuchsia. Where is my bubblegum pink? I oh, know I have it. Bubblegum pink. Here it is. Yeah. Look at that. Ooh, let's see what this will do. Going to shake it real good. Shake it good. Shake it good. Okay. Now let me show you a little trick. If you take Let's say a piece of paper, cut it into a shape, circle, whatever, a lid. You can see here I have this uh, tape. You know when you're using tape and that comes off? So we're going to do that right this second. I'm going to show you just a couple tricks. Well, nope, we're not going to show you anything because that isn't coming out right now. So let's use the other one. Why don't we? Look at that. And I'm just going to leave it sit for a second so I don't screw anything up just for a second. Now you could see, look at that. And you see how we're making different um, shapes. Let's do, let's do orange. This is called squeezed orange. I'll give it a good shake. That's it. Nothing ma major. Look at that. This is a tape roll thing. All right. Real quick, I'm going to show you. And then look when you stamp it. I'm getting two fur. I'm getting the two fur. Look, and then you can even stamp it on here. And it is just deliciousness. So look at that paint. I mean, a tape uh, thing. Now, if you don't have that, maybe you like to chew gum. I don't know. Do you? I do. You guys know if you, you know, if you've seen, I use these on my art dolls as eyeshadow and stuff. But why not just put it down? Oh, I hate to ruin. We'll just do it right there. Now I'm going to use white because they have um, white linen. I'm going to give it a shape. Now, this is metallic shiny. That's why it's kind of blown back from the thing. Don't worry about it. I'm going to do it up there, too. And see how it just holds that? You can't really see the detail too much because it's light. I'll do it here. Look at that. Oh. And then you can see that there's someone here. Well, where do we want it? I don't know. Let's do it. Let's just plop it there. Push it down. Lift up and look at that. That's that extra. You can even do some more here. So you see what I'm saying? What are we using here? Gum wrappers, tape, empty tape rolls. Come on now. All right. I think I've done enough, but you see, we're getting these great you know, and we're building up on this, which is always fun. Now I'm going to dry this just because. Now, if you don't have these, of course you can make your own. 
So if you guys want a video on that, let me know down below. Make some very cool uh, ink sprays. Of course, use whatever ink sprays you have. If you, you might have some, uh, you know, deco art media ones. You might have some, I love these. The glimmer mist. Oh, I love these. I, I love this. I love how, you know, you can do a bunch of those. All right. All right, ready? Now see how the colors came through the white a little bit. Okay. Oh. Love it, love it, love it. All right, I'm going to move these papers. But look, I got these started. Look at that. They're almost mixed media papers. Now I can use them again and I like to turn them. So, you know, everything kind of gets different, um, different paints and colors and all that kind of stuff. But for now, I'm gonna do this because you'll be able to see it better. And it feels pretty dry, doesn't look too wet. Okay, so now this is our mixed media background, but is it done? No, here's one more thing I like to do. And I'm gonna show you. Eh. It is using a couple stamps. Use whatever ink pad you have. Now, this is color box, and this is just what I happen to grab because a lot of my stuff is still downstairs. I have to grab it. But here's the thing these are very cheap. This is from Plaid. You can get these very big, cheap stamps. Um, and you also can always go and use a coupon and get, pick a stamp that is your favorite, whatever. Um, you also can make them out of the fun foam. I have a million and six, you know, um, videos on how to do that. So I will link those down below as well. I don't have any of them sitting here, but I love to do that. I also love to use, um, you know, your everyday items like your, uh, makeup sponge and you know, whatever you have, just use whatever you have. I'm going to use this on this page and I'm going to go light. I think, let's see what this orange will do. And you can see I use these for mixed media because colors are mixed all over and I'm going to stamp it on and you don't have to get all of it. If you don't want, you could have variations in the colors and then I'm just going to stamp. You see, put a little bit more very quick. No big deal. Put you back in there. My cat knocked these off and uh like to play with the one color and I didn't know. <laughs> okay, and I'm just laying it down, no big deal. And maybe you want to add like a dark green. Hey, and if you don't have these, use paint. We can use paint too, don't worry. And I'm not cleaning any of it off. Just doing that. I'll use half the stamp there. We just want some of that texture. Not a big deal. And that could be any color. It doesn't have to be, you know, what I did. Do it whatever way you want. And I'll cover that up just so it doesn't dry out. And set that over there. If you don't have stamps, use use uh, crayons, use markers, use whatever you have. If you have watercolor markers, use those. Crayolas, all that stuff's fantastic. All right. So I'm going to dry this for one second, and then I'm going to show you. What this beginner, easy, mix me yard journal pages. And one of the easiest things I love to do are hearts. And, you know, I, I think if you do something like this and you want to do a page, but you don't know what you want to put on top, look how gorgeous. Look, let me move back here. Okay, look at this. Look at those layers. Oh. Same stuff, same colors, but look at the difference. Isn't that fantastic? Absolutely fantastic. That is, this is a fantastic mixed media background. Now, like I said, you want to do a heart, 
do a heart. You want to do, uh, draw a picture, draw a picture. You want to glue something down, glue something down. Maybe you have a picture of your, um, you know, an animal or, a, you know, a child or something, you know, that you printed out or whatever. You can put it on the, on here. I think what I'm going to do is very simple. I'm going to fold this in half. And I'm going to cut out a heart. I'm going to make it as big as I can on here. Now, don't throw this away because, look, you still have. You could even use this and glue it down for something else as a heart. And you still have this. So don't throw that away. Never throw it away. But, look, we have this cute heart. And it can go on both, and it can go right in the middle. But I'm going to do it on this side. And I'm going to use my glue stick just to show you. And I'll show you how we'll make it pop. Ooh. Now, see that? Let me look at that. I think I'm going that way with it. How do you like that? I'm not even going to use this side. I'm going to put some glue down. This is just my owner's glue stick. All mine. Nobody gave it to me. I think Emily might have bought it for me, but that doesn't matter. All right. And I'm going to lay it here. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Just lay it. Now you could, I could have laid it in between, but I'm, I think I'm just going to do this. I love hearts. I do hearts all the time. They're easy and, and people can do hearts. You just cut them out. You pretend like you're in school, right? All right. So now we have that. So let's take, do we want glitter? Do we want, what do we want? What do we want? I'm going to take hmm, black because look, why not? I'm going to take black and scoop my arm. And this is just black. This is called pure black <laughs> from folk art. I'm going to open it. I'm going to take a small paintbrush and I'm going to wet it and I'm just going in here. I'm going to mix it in here. I always do that stuff. It doesn't matter. Just so it's a little more inky, but if you don't want to do this, you can definitely use a black marker, Sharpie, watercolor marker, whatever you have. And I'm just going to go. I like using um, Faber-Castells as well because until they dry, I can manipulate them and make them look more watercolor. I'm going to give it a little thing here. Now, what I'm going to do is go in with my finger and kind of give it a smudge. Ooh, you know what would be good? Gelatos, uh, your water-soluble oil pastels. Any oil pas pastels will work. Oh, yeah. You see how that makes that pop? Ooh, yeah. All right. You can do the same thing. Look at that. I don't know if you can hear my dog snoring. <laughs> He's snoring away. Oh, yeah. Oh, I love it. I want to give like a little boopy here. Now, if you want it to be darker going around, you can definitely, you know, and you don't have to smudge it. I just like to smudge. And I think what I'm going to do is do a water. Do I want to do red? Oh, maybe I'll do red in the middle. I'm going to rinse this out. I'm going to take my dilutions in, what color is that? Post box red. Post box red. I'm going to open it though. And I'm going to stick my brush in. And I'm going to do this with some water. Probably a bigger brush. And I'm not worrying how transparent or anything like that. I just want to drag it. A little bit of wet. Oh gosh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. A little bit more. And you can do this with red acrylic paint as well. And do you see, because this is a wrinkled page, remember? Look at that. Oh, it's almost like it's bleeding. I love it. But remember, this is this that I wrinkled that I made this. We're getting a twofer, right? Oh, but I love that. I love that look. I can't even, I can't even touch it. I'm just going to make this go to the edges because that's going to bother me. I want it to go to the edges. 
Oh yeah. Okay. But do you see how simple? I'm going to close this because you know what will happen. It'll be everywhere. Which I did one day. Oh, I was so upset. I did that with my, um, uh, what are they called? Liquitex inks, acrylic inks, my favorite color. I was doing some fabric and uh, psh, I knew it. It's one of those things where you're like, don't leave it there. Don't leave it there. You know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm going to dry this for a second. But I'm going to hold this up high because I don't want it to necessarily blow that uh, all over the place off of the heart. It's okay if it stays in the heart, but just to take most of it. And it dries fast. Now, what would be really cool is, oh, I think I'm going to, excuse my arm just for one second because I want to blow that down. Okay, so what I'm going to do, last thing, just because I get excited, I'm going to take some glossy Mod Podge, shake it up, I have it in a mustard <laughs> container because it's easier for me to deal with, but it's glossy, and I'm going to just gloss it. Now, you could use Dimension, um, look, Dimensional Magic by Mod Podge, you can use glossy, uh, what's it called? You can use glossy accents. You can use um, nail polish. I mean, really, whatever you want. I'm going to take this. I'm going to dry this off my brush the best I can. And then just kind of, because remember, that dilutions is going to be reactive, reactivated rather with this. So I'm just going to kind of tap it in. Love it. You see how it brightens it up? You can put glitter. You can do whatever you want. Now I suggest you leave this dry overnight or for a few hours if you use the Mod Podge gloss, just so it dries. Um, so, you know, but look at that. Look at the gloss. That's just from the Mod Podge. So when it dries all the way, all these dark spots are going to look, oh, I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Look at that. And you can make, you know, you can put the gloss around the heart. You can do whatever you want, but that's just basics. So let me know what you guys think down below. And if you do this, of course, please tag me. All my social media is down below. Please don't forget to check out Blitzy and uh, let me know what you think. And that's about it. So remember, this is progress, not perfection. This is just how to do a mixed media background in your art journal and how to finish it. You know, and you can do this on an ATC card. You can do this on a canvas. You can do this on whatever you want. It's all items from home. It's not a big deal other than the spray. And like I said, we can make our own spray. Let me know. And, um, you know, as always, please be kind to each other. I'm going to use this real quick. This is the Shimmer Mist in Turquoise Blue, just because of that blue. And it's going to give it a nice glimmer mist. Um, but yeah, please be kind to each other. You never know a battle somebody else is fighting. I love you guys. Please share me everywhere. I really appreciate it. And just, just have fun. I love you guys. Have a great day. And I will talk to you later. Bye.